Pepsi-Cola, P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter-Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter-Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter-Spy. Harding, Counter-Spy, calling Washington. United States Counter-Spies especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the blackmailed hijacker, a counter-spy report to the American people, brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola hits the spot, two full glasses, that's a lot. That's right, you heard what they said, two full glasses of sparkling Pepsi from one big 12-ounce bottle. You're getting an extra glass full. And what a delicious glass full. The most refreshing, delightful cola that ever tickled your taste. You can't top Pepsi's tangy flavor. And that big, big bottle saves you money, goes twice as far. Pepsi is America's big, big favorite. And America's biggest cola value. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi is best? And now, to Counter Spy. Shortly after midnight, last February 3rd, a heavy truck carrying 10 tons of high explosives to a government arsenal was rolling along a foggy, mountainous stretch of Highway 9W in eastern Pennsylvania. The driver, Larry Mason, held the wheel tightly. Hey, Vince. Yeah? Vince, can you see anything? Ah, the fog's getting thicker by the minute, Larry. For the love of Mike, Larry, if you got a whistle, at least change that tune. You know, we should have stopped before we hit this road, Vince. With that ten tons of nitro we got in the back, one slip and my wife cashes in my insurance. Hey, Larry, yeah. up ahead. Yeah, Looks like a car skidded right across the road. Slow it down. Oh. Well, I, I don't see the driver, do you, Vince? No. Well, we better get out and take a look. Maybe we can help the guy. Yeah. I'll get out on your side, too. Okay, you Joe. Hey. Hold everything. Guy with a gun. Hey, what is this? Get away from that truck. This is a hijack, sweetheart. And this is a trick I learned in the army. Oh, you kick me, will you? Vince, look out. Urgent to all counter-spy field offices, District 3. Mr. Harding now in Pittsburgh field office to take charge of following case. Truck hijacking last night, Highway 9W, Eastern Pennsylvania. Relief driver Vince Dugan killed. Killer tentatively identified as one Sid Barlow. See counter-spy file. Identification made by surviving driver of truck, Larry Mason. Uh, lock the door for you, Carol? Oh, no, Larry. I'm only going to the supermarket. I'll be right back. Okay. I've got to buy a lot of groceries, darling. You've got time to help me carry them back? Well, kiddo, I'm due downtown at the counter spy field office to see David Harding. I wish you'd let me go with you. No, no, I don't want you to have anything to do with oh, the Larry. murders and ex-convicts. Hey, Larry. Larry Mason. Oh, hello, Steve. Hi, Larry. Going downtown, huh? Yeah. Steve, this is the wife, Carol. Honey, it's Steve Kramer, chief truck dispatcher down at the company for six or seven years. Oh, Mrs. Mason, Larry had an order to keep you to himself. Oh, thanks, Mr. Kramer. Oh, Larry, I'm going on to the market. See you at supper, honey. So long, kiddo. Lucky you, Larry. Oh, don't I know it. Going downtown, too, Steve? I'm kind of in a hurry. Counter-spy field office, huh? Yeah. 
Nine o'clock to identify the guy who killed Vince Dugan. Hmm. How about a lift? Oh, you got your car, Steve? A friend of mine's got his right over here. Good. I happened to spot you, so we stopped. Good enough. Hop in, Larry. Thanks. This is a friend of mine, Mr. Marengo, Larry Mason. Hiya. Good morning. You in, Steve? Take off. Well, Larry, I've been telling Mr. Marengo what pals you and Vince Dugan were. Vince was a great guy. Yes, yes, it was an unfortunate accident, Larry. It wasn't an accident, Mr. Marengo. That rotten dog just shot Vince down. I understand the counter spies already picked up the guy who killed Vince from the description you gave him. Yeah. Character named Sid Barlow. All they need now is for you to pick the guy out of the lineup. I'll never forget that killer's face. I'll pick him out all right. Larry, maybe you won't pick Barlow out. Why wouldn't I hang it on Barlow if he's the guy? Tell him, Steve. Larry, three years ago, a con got out of the state jug in Ohio after a stretch for manslaughter. Truck uh, accident. Yeah. He comes here to Pittsburgh, changes his name to Larry Mason, and gets a job with our company as truck driver. Under false pretenses. How did you know? Also, Larry, last year you married a very lovely girl. I'll say. But, of course, uh, you didn't tell Carol about your prison term, did you? Now, listen. What Carol doesn't know won't hurt her, eh, Larry? Carol doesn't have to know. Does she, Steve? Oh, Mr. Marengo, nobody has to know. That's up to Larry. So that's the setup. Ah, huh? Steve, it's a quarter to nine. Uh, we'll drive Larry down to the Countess by field office. Uh, Mr. Harding will be waiting for it. <laughs> Mr. Harding, here's Larry Mason. Mr. Harding? Good morning, Larry. Sit down here with Peters and me. Yes, sir. This is our lineup room, Larry. In a few seconds, several men will come out on that platform up there behind glass. Sid Barlow among them. Now, I want you to pick out the killer. Yes, sir. The lights are so arranged that we can see the men, but they can't see us. And they can't hear us either. Conway. Yes, Mr. Harding? We're ready, Conway. You can send them out. Yes, sir. Okay, boys, you're wanted on stage. There they are, Larry. Well, uh, the second man from the left, he looks something like him. Take your time. Well, I'm not positive now. You know, I only uh, only saw the killer from the side. Just a minute. Conway, second man from the left, turn to the right. Second man from the left, turn to the right. He seems taller. You see the man you described to us the other day? Well, I'm not so sure now. You, you know, it was dark that night. Larry, was... Vince Dugan was your closest friend. You have a deep personal interest in bringing his murderer to trial. Sure, sure. But there's even more to this case. Recently, a number of trucks carrying nitrofentuiline, a powerful explosive, have been hijacked. Yes, that's what we were carrying the other night. Well, Larry, we suspect that some big international racketeer is shipping these stolen explosives to a dangerous anti-American group in the Far East can make all kinds of international trouble. Yes, sir, I, I see. Now, if you can point out the killer, you'll be helping us smash a dangerous international racket. Now, can you identify one of those men as the murderer of Vince Dugan? Mr. Harding, he... He's not there. Not the one who killed Vince Dugan. Mason, your original description of the murderer was an amazingly exact one and detailed... You were eager to see him punished. I'd like to know what's changed your mind. All right, Mason. You can go. Yeah, Larry, this is Steve. I left a message for you to call me. Listen, I made a date for you with Mr. Marengo, and you better come. Eight o'clock tonight in this penthouse apartment. I'll pick you up. Larry, I want to thank you for not identifying Barlow yesterday at the counter-spy field office. Keep your thanks, Marengo. Larry, that's no way to act to Mr. Marengo. Well, there's nothing to talk about, Steve. You two got what you wanted, and that was the deal. Yes, Larry, that was that deal. 
Now I have a new deal for you. Chance to make some real dough, Larry. Not the measly dough you get for pushing a truck around for our company. I'm satisfied. <laughs> Nothing so stubborn as a reformed convict, eh, Steve? Larry, I'm scheduling you to take a load of explosives for the company tomorrow night to another arsenal at Bay City, alone. That powder don't get to Bay City. You see, Larry, some of my men will be waiting to meet your truck on the highway. Mr. Marengo has it all set up, Larry. All you do is take one on the chin to make the hijack look clean. Nothing doing. It's no deal, Marengo. I paid you off. I did what you wanted, and I'm through. Larry, what about David Harding? Harding? What do you mean? Larry, you did a very bad thing when you uh, took the finger off Sid Barlow. You, an ex-con, deliberately deceived Harding. <laughs> you see, Larry, you have to accept my offer. My man will expect you tomorrow night. What's the setup, Peter? Larry Mason's taking a load of explosives to the Bay City Arsenal tonight, Dave, alone. Oh, it's a perfect situation for Mason to allow himself to be hijacked. But do we allow it, Dave? I tell you what, we'll set up observation posts all along Mason's route. Now, besides, you tail him in a car. Take at least three more men, armed for a capture if necessary. I'll keep in touch with all of you from the communications room. Mr. Harding, Conway reporting from Greenvale. Truck driven by Larry Mason stopped here 11.35 p.m. While he was cleaning his license, I checked his speedometer. Reading... 22,314 miles. Greenvale, 11.35. Driving time checks, mileage checks. Thanks, Conway. Adams reporting from Pine City, Mr. Harding. Larry Mason's time here, 1.05 a.m. Speedometer reading, 22,367. Time and mileage check, and Adams... Peters and three men are tailing Mason's truck in a car, ready for trouble if it comes. Keep an eye out for them. Peters calling Harding from pursuing car. Something's up. What is it? Larry Mason has just turned his truck off the main highway. What's your location now? A dirt road, alternate 6A, leading up into the mountains. It's an even better spot for a planned hijacking than the highway, Peters. Keep following. Keep me informed. You mean nothing unusual happened on that long detour he took through the mountain? Not a thing, Dave. The driver doesn't take a truckload of high explosive on a dangerous detour just for the thrill. Stick close to him. Let's see what he does next. Dave. Hey, Dave, wake up. Oh, oh. oh Peter, I guess I dozed off in my chair waiting all night for you to call again. Hey, what are you doing back here in Pittsburgh? I tailed Mason all the way back from Bay City. No trouble. Admittedly, it looked like a hijack set up at first, but nothing happened. He came back, left his truck in the main garage, and went home. Larry Mason is a very puzzling young man. We'll have to find some way of unpuzzling him. <laughs> Sorry I woke you, Carol. Oh. oh, it's you, Larry. You said you wouldn't be back from Bay City until tomorrow. Well, we have no phone here. I couldn't call you. Darling, what are you doing? Uh, where's my suitcase? Well, it's, it's in your closet. I'll get it. Larry, what's wrong? Well, I'm just taking my clothes. Larry, please, what's happened? Larry, you're in trouble. There's no trouble. I, I'm just fed up with Pittsburgh. That's not true. You're running out on me, aren't you? Oh, Larry. Carol. Carol, no. Honest, honey, I wasn't running. 
Listen, Carol, I'm in a jam. See, I, I have to get out of Pittsburgh now, tonight. I don't care what it is, darling. If you'll just tell me. Well, there's no time to tell you. Will you come with me? Larry, you know I will. Oh, of all times, not to have a phone. Look, I'll go down to the Crescent Airport and get tickets now, fast. All right. You pack, grab a taxi, and meet me at the airport as soon as you can. Yes. And don't worry, honey. Everything's going to be fine. Just fine. <laughs> Crescent Airport driver, please. Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, will you help me with some suitcases that they're on the porch? Mason, going someplace? What? Why, yes. Uh, who are you? Get in the cab. Just a minute, I don't I ha- told you to get in. Driver! Driver, this man, stop him! Okay, pal, let's go. All right. Let me out of here, do you hear me? Not Let me... yet, Mrs. Mason. Uh, where, where are you taking me? What do you want? I want you to give a message to your husband. Larry? A special kind of message, Mrs. Mason. The kind your husband will understand. What are you talking about? Mrs. Mason, the next time your husband is told to do something, it's got to be done right. But I... No side roads, no stand-ups. The next time he delivers, or something fatal will happen to you, to him too. That's the message. Now, Mrs. Mason... Just make sure he gets the message straight. No, 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 don't push me out, please. Back to Counter Spy in a moment. But first... Pepsi-Cola, it's a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? More and more, among fellows and girls, among mothers and dads, you hear that sane and sensible question, why take less when Pepsi is best? No budget, no allowance, ever had a better friend than tangy, sparkling Pepsi-Cola. Because one big 12-ounce Pepsi bottle gives you two delicious drinks. That's twice as much tangy taste, twice as much delicious Pepsi, to go just twice as far. That's why more and more families say, why take less when Pepsi is best? Yes, families like yours and mine. Families all over America. They're all saying, why take less when Pepsi is best? Pepsi Cola so delicious and each bottle makes two drinks. It is certainly the cola for the purchaser who thinks everybody's drinking Pepsi. Just compare it with the rest. So much more and so much finer. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Today, tomorrow, always. Get America's biggest cola value. Take home a carton of six big, big Pepsi bottles. Insist on Pepsi at the store. And say Pepsi at the fountain. Say Pepsi at the stand. Say Pepsi. Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? Now, back to Counter Spy. Page 7, Continental Airlines, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, now loading at gate 4. Hello, Larry. Right. Oh, Mr. Peters. Mr. Harding's in that car over there. He wants to talk with you. Well, I'm sorry. I'm in a hurry. Larry, I... Mr. Harding said he wanted to talk to you. Well, okay. All right, get in. Hello, Larry. I'm afraid you're not leaving town, Larry. What? I saw you buy two plane tickets ten minutes ago. So you saw me buy tickets? Is that a crime? Larry, you're a material witness in a murder case. I could have you held in custody for this. Yes, I guess you could. But I'm not going to. Instead, we're going back to your home. When we get there, you and your wife and I... My wife? She's got nothing to do with all this. Larry, a few hours ago, we received certain files. They explain some of your recent actions. Now I want you to be completely honest with me. I was, right along. Larry, we not only want to clean up this hijack case and Vince Dugan's murderer, but we also want to help you and Mrs. Mason. I tell you, she doesn't know anything about this. Emergency flash, Mr. Harding. Peters, car C-8, go ahead. Conway, where are you now, Peters? Right outside Crescent Airport with Mr. Harding. Good. Uh, On that hijacking case, we just got a flash from City Hospital. A woman identified as Mrs. Larry Mason. Carol. Just brought into the emergency ward. 
She was beaten and thrown from a moving car. Oh, she said stuff. her husband was at the airport. I knew you'd gone out there. What's Mrs. Mason's condition, Conway? Very serious. She's been given sedatives. Uh, can you locate uh, Larry Mason there? He's right with us. We'll head for the hospital. Step on it, Peter. Use your siren. Right. Larry, now will you cooperate with us? Oh, the dirty, rotten skunks. All along you've been trying to protect your wife, haven't you? That's right. She didn't know about your record, did she? You know now I was a con. No, I, I never told Carol, and I was sure jerk not to. Okay, Mr. Harding, how, how do you want me to help? After we see your wife, I think you can start working back in that garage. Yes, Steve? Some stunt you pulled taking a detour last night and ducking the hijack setup. I thought it was a good stunt. We're giving you one more chance. For your sake, don't disappoint Mr. Marengo again. What's the deal? I'm scheduling you to take a nitro load to the Western Arsenal tonight. What road? Route 63 through the Elder Valley. Mr. Marengo's boys will be waiting for you in the valley. Uh, by the way, Larry... I'm sorry about what happened to that pretty missus of yours. Someday I'm going to flatten your face for that, so help me. Oh, it wasn't my doing. It was Marenko's idea. Well, after this deal, Steve, we're through. Yeah, sure, Larry. Tonight you meet the boys in the Elder Valley, and then we're through. <laughs> There's the lights on Mason's truck, Mr. Marengo. Stop down there in the valley. The boy signaled it? Yes, Steve. See, I told you Larry Mason would show this time. Lucky for you. My business is too rich to take chances. Chances? I've decided the truck will not be hijacked. Not after I set everything up and all your boys down there got to do is go to work? You don't understand. It'll only appear that the truck wasn't hijacked. I don't get you, Mr. Marengo. Right now, Sid Barlow and the rest of my men are removing most of the powder from that truck, as I originally planned. What they leave will be used to destroy the truck and Larry Mason. Kill Larry Mason? Hey, it looked like an accident, huh? We won't have to worry anymore about trusting him or not. Both he and the truck will be blown to bits. Mr. Marengo, this is something I gotta see. Oh, you'll see it, Steve. You and I both will. Ah, flashing the signal to me from up here. Everything's ready. Now, huh? Yes, Steve. In a moment. shouldn't go near that exploded truck, Mr. Marengo. Those other cars come along. Then we just act like horrified witnesses. Here's the road. <laughs> and here's what's left of the truck. Careful. Huh? Not all of the explosives may have gone up at once. See, there's still some flames. Some flames, yeah. But not much truck. Uh, a very powerful explosive. Is it not, Steve? Yeah, I'll say... Hey, are your boys supposed to be close by with the other cans of explosive? Yes. Yes, but Barlow should be at this spot to report to me. Why isn't he here? Hey, take another look at the wreckage. Huh? What's the matter? Here's where the driver's cab was. Only where's Larry? Where's his body? Peculiar stuff. Very peculiar. First, your boys. No sign of them. Then, no sign of Larry. I don't understand it. You sure nothing could have gone wrong? My orders were clear. Hijack the truck, remove most of the explosive, blow up the truck and Larry Mason with the rest. Yeah, but if Larry's dead, where is he? Steve, but... I'm over here. Marengo. You hear that? It was Larry. But... Impossible. I know his voice. He's alive. 
over behind those trees. Get your gun out. I got it. I'll try to get him to show himself. When he does shoot, leave it to me. Larry? What do you want, Marengo? We want to talk to you. Come out. I'm hurt. I can't move. You got to pull here. Come on. Uh, where are you exactly, Larry? You'll find out, but not to see what the way it's got. Not a chance. Now, Steve. Do it. We can get it out again quickly when we get closer. Now, come on. Stop where you are. Why, uh, what's the matter, Larry? I've got a gun, too. Stay where you are, right in that patch of moonlight where I can see you plainly. Now, first, we're going to get a couple of things straight. What's he trying to do? Quiet. Uh, what is it, Larry? You've got to remember... I know that Sid Barlow murdered Vince Dugan. Yes, but but what of it? And I know you and Steve got sore because I was spoiling your hijack rack. You tried to kill me tonight by blowing up my truck. That, uh, that was all a mistake, Larry. From now on, we'll be good friends and trust each other. Okay, Marengo, uh, Steve, uh, hands in the air. What? Counter it, five, Marengo, you're surrounded. Counter it, five. It's a trick. Hey. All right. Get their gun, Peter. Right. I'll handle Marenko. Oh, no, 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 he trapped us. Marengo, Steve, your whole plan went wrong. After we took your trigger man Barlow and the rest of your mob, we set off that explosion. You? What? Well, exactly as you had planned. Except that Larry left the truck first. From the things you admitted to him a moment ago, we've got enough to send you and all your gang away for the rest of your lives. When your friends drop in, be generous, but be thrifty, too. Serve plenty of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle gives you not just one sparkling glass full, but two. Get a carton of six and serve 12 delicious drinks. Yes, Pepsi is America's biggest cola value. You get twice the tangy taste, twice the refreshment, twice the Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi's best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Pepsi-Cola, hits the spot, two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen next Thursday for the exciting Counter Spy case of the Murmured Million. The seashore rendezvous between two men that changed the lives of thousands of women. The lone wolf swindler who demonstrated that words speak louder than actions, and the enormous lips that accused a racketeer a quarter mile away. Be sure to listen Thursday, day after tomorrow, to The Case of the Murmured Million on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Rosa Rio. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi-Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi ice cold tonight. (laughs) 